Let's try the middle this time. So Kristen Wiig is gonna play the cheetah. I'm fine with that. I know some people are concerned that a traditionally comedic actress is gonna play the role rather than somebody more used to dramatic or action movie type parts, but I think she'll be fine. I mean, have you guys seen Mother? She's in that and there's nothing funny about that movie. Also remember, Robin Williams, probably the funniest man in history, played a really creepy ass stalker in one hour photo. So there is precedent for a comedic actor doing something dramatic. What interests me more is the story potential. If they're going with the modern version of Cheetah, the Barbara Ann Minerva version, that would make her an archeologist who becomes the Cheetah through an ancient curse. And that's a great place to start, but I feel like we need more. We need something else to push it just a little bit further so it can be as good, if not better, than the original. Like all great comic book movies, that's where we turn to the source material for inspiration. And since this is my channel. Your channel? Did you just say your channel? I'm over here, look at me. I'm up to my goddamn eyeballs in taxes, in tax crap. You're over there, you're over there working your nine to five job. I'm over here up to up to my goddamn eyeballs and paperwork just for your ass, cause it's your channel. It's not anywhere near your channel. It's, it's uh, my goddamn channel. I will fight to the death for that play button. Hey, why don't you come over and check out the office that we got? Oh, I don't know, I haven't seen you there. I haven't seen you there in a while. I haven't seen you there at all, actually. Since this is my show, that means we're gonna talk about the Hikatea. If you've been following me for any length of time, you know that I think that the Hikatea by Greg Rucka and J.G. Jones is one of the best Wonder Woman stories of all time, maybe even the best. It's the book I recommend to anybody who's never read a Wonder Woman comic before and wants to know where to start. In my opinion, it gives the best sense of who the character is and what she's willing to do for love and honor. Mild spoilers going forward, I'm not gonna talk about too many major things in the book, but in order to talk about why I think it should be a movie, I do have to talk about certain aspects of it. So just letting you know now, I still want you to go out and read it, um, but yeah, mild spoilers for the Hikatea. Oh, and full spoilers for the Wonder Woman movie, but if you're watching this channel, you saw that already. So in the comic, a Hikatea is an ancient Amazonian ritual where one seeks the protection of another. This protection is for life and is unbreakable unless the person asking for protection breaks the bond. In this story, a young woman named Danielle Welly seeks out Wonder Woman's aid by invoking Hikatea. She's seeking protection from those hunting her for a crime she committed. Despite knowing that Danielle is guilty of this crime, and even despite Danielle trying to break Hikatea at one point, Wonder Woman sticks to her oath and protects her at all costs from those who try to bring her to justice, and that includes the goddamn Batman. It's a great story, one filled with tragedy and big questions. Do you honor the traditions and rituals of your people? Or do you honor the justice you've sworn to uphold? Now you may have noticed that I didn't mention the cheetah in this synopsis, and that's because she's not in the original story. So how do we add her to the story of the Hikatea without sacrificing anything from the original plot or having her feel shoehorned in? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Have Cheetah be the Danielle Welly's character. Have her seek out Wonder Woman's aid. Have the movie begin with Diana Prince and Barbara Ann Minerva both working at a museum or a university or something. We know from BBS and Justice League and the Wonder Woman solo movie that Diana has some sort of job in art. So it would make sense to stick her in a position where her coworker would be an archeologist or a historian. They become best friends and Diana even shares some of her Amazonian heritage with Barbara Ann, including the Hikatea. Enter Demios and Phobos, the children of Ares. They've been trying to figure out a way to get revenge on Wonder Woman for killing their father in part one. And they figured the best way to do this would put a curse on her best friend Barbara that would turn her into a murderous cheetah. Unlike the comics, this cheetah would be more in line with the traditional werewolf, turning into the cheetah at night and being unable to control her bloodline but fully aware of what she's doing. Horrified by what she had done, she would run to Diana, ask for her protection, and Diana, in accordance to Hikatea's tradition, would have to accept it. When she does find out the truth halfway through the movie, it'll not only be a big dramatic reveal for the character, but it'll also introduce and expand upon the themes of the book. There would of course have to be a lot more changes in order to fit the Hikatea into the established DC movie universe. The biggest change of all would be what to do with Batman. Rumor has it this movie is gonna take place in the 1980s. If that's true, I don't think Ben Affleck's Batman was active during that time frame. And even if he was, this would introduce a whole 
whole lot of continuity problems with the later films. Why didn't Bruce Wayne recognize Diana from Batman vs Superman? Plus, Ben Affleck doesn't want to be Batman anymore, so why stick him in another movie he clearly doesn't want to do? Now, at first, I thought the answer would be Steve Trevor. It seemed to make the most sense. Have him work for like the CIA or some other government agency who would naturally want to bring a murderous cheetah person to justice. But I was thinking of comic book Steve Trevor. Movie Steve Trevor wouldn't work because he's dead. But what about the other characters from the Not Howling Commandos? What about Smear or Charlie or Chief Noppy? He's supposed to be a demigod, right? So that could be interesting. Now, you could introduce a new character to fill this void, but if you ask me, I think it would have a much greater impact if the audience already had knowledge of the opposing force. It's like my friends know when I'm filming and that's when they all decide to text me. There are a million different ways this story can go. There are a lot of really good cheetah stories out there. Greg Rucka, in fact, just finished a really good one. I'm sure as long as they don't do the stupid Sebastian Bellatros version, we'll be fine. I just feel that this story is the perfect story to use if they want to take Wonder Woman as a character further, to take her to a place that movie audiences A, never expected, and B, had never seen before. Not only that, it would reinvent the cheetah from being somebody who could easily be portrayed as a typical monster movie type villain into a character with a lot more sympathy. But what do you guys think Wonder Woman 2 should be about? Do you like my idea or do you think there's another better story that they should try to adapt? So let me know down below or anywhere on the internet. New videos every Tuesday and Wednesday and Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern is always Wolf Den Live. So make sure you're subscribed to see all of that. Like this video and share it with a friend, a friend who has their own idea of what Wonder Woman 2 should be. And you want to show them this because this is a better idea. Thank you all for watching. I will see you next time.